In this video, I would like to show you how I make points. I will say this, there are probably half a dozen different methods of making a point. My recommendation is that you learn all that you can, try them all, decide on one that you feel is most comfortable for you, and then practice, 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 because ultimately in the end, those beautiful points are the result of a lot of practice. In part two of my back basting applique tutorials, I cut out a heart for applique. When I did that, I left extra fabric down at the point. I'd now like to explain why there is that extra fabric at the point. I have a visual aid and I'm sorry, it has been laminated, making it a little bit shiny, but hopefully if I hold it just right, you'll be able to see. I have cut extra fabric right at the point. Our first thought is that, oh, that just adds bulk to the point. But in actuality, that is not a true statement. The fabric at the point will be brought around underneath and up against the side I have just stitched. The extra fabric is not going to be anywhere near the point. The advantage of having that extra fabric is that it gives me something to grab a hold of, to turn under at the point. If I had cut my fabric really narrow here at the point, there's hardly any fabric to grab a hold of and turn under, and it presents a really difficult situation. Instead, we can trim seam allowance underneath. Let me show you how that's done. We stitch down our side until we get to approximately, oh, a quarter of an inch or so away from the point. I've been using short, tiny stitches. I'm going to make them even closer together. This last quarter of an inch, I'm going to be putting in, oh, as many little stitches in there as I can get in. That's at all practical. The reason for that is that I will be taking, in just a few moments, I will be taking the seam allowance on this side and pushing it up against the seam on this side. And we want to be sure the seam on this side holds tight. So lots of little tiny stitches go right in that last quarter of an inch. I probably put what, six in maybe, five or six at least. Uh, sometimes I can even get in one or two more. Lots of little stitches right at the end. Okay, when I have my last stitch in, and oh, by the way, I forgot to show you that. Let me go back and stick this needle in here. This is the way it would be for my last stitch. And I would turn it over at this point, and I don't know if you can see, but my needle is right at the point. Okay. I turn my work, and right where the thread comes out, on the last stitch, I'm going to go in and put a second stitch right at that point. I'm making it very shallow, but right there and pull it up tight. Believe it or not, I've now made the point. I will not revisit it. I only have to come down the other side. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this thread and get it out of my road. So I'm going to take and right beside where the last stitch came out, I'm going to put my needle in and take my thread to the back. That gets it out of my road. I'm going to turn my work and the first thing I will do is to clip relieving this seam. Uh, eventually I will need to have it relieved in order to turn it under because it is an inner curve or a concave curve and we always relieve our concave curves. Okay, while we have it at this angle, we're going to cut off some of this excess. You notice I had the extra, and that's fine. We're gonna keep it here. I'm not unhappy with it. 
I'm going to come in and I'm going to take out uh, a couple, three of these basting stitches. I really don't need them at this point in time, so I'm going to get them out of here. There we go. Now, looking at it from this end, can you see what I see? Can you see the seam allowance that's been turned under? Okay, that is what we're going to cut out. The area that has already been stitched. We are not going to trim any seam allowance that has not been turned under. If we trim it, it would be very narrow and very difficult to turn under. Instead, we're gonna come in and trim this seam allowance. And I'm gonna to try to do it while I'm looking through the camera lens. I'm gonna come right under here. By the way, I'm using serrated scissors. They help hold it in place. Take it down there a little bit. And then look at all the fabric we are going to be able to pull out and take out of our point. We have not in any way endangered the turning under of the, the other side. We have plenty of fabric for it, but we have gotten rid of the excess fabric underneath. Okay, now we're gonna turn our work. We're gonna come down the other side. Our point is here. It's just a matter of revealing that point. And we will do it now by grabbing this excess fabric. It's there so we can grab a hold of it and turn it under. And we have made a point. It's just a matter at this point in time of nailing it down with stitches. Can you see what a beautiful, nice little point I've got there? It's wonderful. Okay, let me find the thread that I have on the back side. And I'm going to come down, oh, an eighth of an inch or so on this side and put in a stitch. I'm not going to put the first stitch in right at the point. Instead, I'm coming down about an eighth of an inch and nailing it down. And you'll notice I'm not really taking a stitch stitch. I'm stabbing it up and down. But that gets the job done. Finger press it. Be sure you've got that nice point. If it at any point slips out a little, take and push it back under. Be sure it's exactly the way you want it. Now, I've taken a stitch about an eighth of the way down, eighth of an inch down here. I want to work my way back to the point, putting additional stitches in to hold it in place. And I will want to put, oh, depending on the size or how much room I have, two or three stitches at least. Once again, this isn't much fun trying to do it through the eye of my camera, but I'm hoping you're getting the general idea. I'm going down and through and up, and yeah, I'm doing it half a stitch at a time. First pushing up from the bottom, and then down beside it from the top, and repeating that until I have the point absolutely locked in. I'll get one more stitch in here, right out at the, almost all at the beginning. There we go. And right down in here. Then I can this time push forward to where I'm going to want to start my regular applique stitches. We can turn and then begin going up the other side. Oops, I think I better clip a couple of these seams, or excuse me, basting stitches. One, two, that's enough. And here, let me gently turn this under and flip under my seam allowance. If I have any difficulty at all with, with that, maybe it doesn't want to do what I want it to do, I just flip around and use the other side, the other end of my cuticle stick and it'll produce a nice, beautiful curve. I can go right on and finish my thing, having a beautiful point at the end. It might seem counterproductive to have that extra fabric at the point, but that extra fabric allows you to clip the seam allowance underneath on the side just stitched and still have plenty of fabric here to grab a hold of to flip under. Thanks for watching this video. 
If you would like to know more about my back basting method called Quick Prep Applique, join my Facebook group called Apple Blossom Quilts Group. Be sure the group is on the end of that. Go to the files section and you will find lessons on my Quick Prep Applique. They'll give you more detail than I have been able to go into in this video. Thanks for watching and happy applicating.